What's up, High Levelers? Funnel Doc here with the High Level Content Army. In today's video, we're going to go over how to build a payment page to sign up a new subscription based client. See you inside today's video. What's up, High Levelers? Funnel Doc. So, today we're going to be showing you how to build a, a payment page for signing up a new client on a website. So, you're going to come right here to your new website. You're going to click this bad boy. For this example, we're just going to create it from scratch. So, we'll say demo. All right, there we go. So we'll click on in here and open up the editor. So the first thing you're gonna do inside your website builder here is click add a new page. And we'll just say this is the sign up page. Right, and hit create. Now for a great example of this, you can use an actual existing page or create from blank. And we're gonna start from blank, just show you how to do this. Now this is great for, it can be used for a number of different things. You know, anything with a subscription based or reoccurring charge, um, maybe you're a personal trainer and you have different packages. You have your high tier, your mid tier, and your low tier, or once a week, twice a week, three times a week. Or maybe you have an agency and you want to sign up someone for Facebook ads. This is a great way that you could set it up. You could have your services listed, show them exactly what they're going to get, and then allow them to be able to put in their credit card information and be able to and, uh, sign up for the subscription. And then you'd be able to have that information on file. So we're going to go ahead and start with a builder here. And I usually like to start with a full um, section here, and then I'll add a row. In this example, we're going to use a one column row because we're going to only add a headline. Now, this headline could be uh, a number of different things. I mean, realistically, let's say we're doing personal trainer services real quick. All right, personal training packages. Cool. So then if I wanted to do like three different packages, I'd come in and I'd do three different columns. And I always recommend giving packages and stuff like that a fancy name. But in this example, since we're just showing you real quick here, we're going to call this package number one, package number two, and package number three. But, you know, if I was doing this, I'd be like, you know, if it was weight loss, it'd be like my, my metabolism accelerator training or something like that. You always want to give um, a product, a name that people are going to be able to remember and potentially even, you know, um, resonate with. So then you come in, you give your three different packages, you can have them set up, you know, we're not going to go in to list everything out, but we'll just say like this one, we'll say this one's like, uh, you know, 600 a month. And then we'll go through. I always recommend when if you're going to be doing things that are very similar in text like this, so that you don't mess up the font size or the colors or anything like that, we'll go so we'll, that you... Um, copy a lot, you know, there's a, there's a reason why you have the copy and paste the option in here or the ability to duplicate. So duplicate, it will save you a lot of time. So we're going to go through and we'll just pretend like these are the three packages here for, you know, time for this, for this actual uh, training here. Then we'll go in, we're going to make a single column. I'm going to add the element now. And there's two real order forms we can use. Now we're, you could use the one-step order form, but that's only if you've already gathered the information. Like for instance, if you had an opt-in page before where you got their name, email, and phone number, that type of thing, and then it was going right to the product, I could see using a one-step order form. But if anytime you haven't gathered their information yet, you always want to use a two-step order form. The reason why is this allows you to be able to gather the information and then not just come to the page. If they're going to actually get to the point where they get to the order form, where they can put in their credit information, you've already got them. That allows you to re-engage them with follow-up, abandoned cart sequences, et cetera, nurturing, that type of thing to make sure that they set, they do buy. Because a lot of times when people come to your funnel or your website, they're not going to buy on the first time. So that's one reason why a two-step order form is so important. So Real quick, the way we could set this up, you'll see here that it's got your company name, your shipping, everything like that. I personally like to leave the shipping on there. I'll change it to bit to uh, address instead. I'm going to show you do that in a second. Just because a lot of times for credit information, uh, you want more sometimes than just their email and their phone number on file, depending on what type of your business, you know, what's good for what's right for your business. So we're going to come on in here and you'll see the general tab here is really just all your general stuff, you know, um, as far as like colors, you know, fonts, uh, sizing, uh, alignment, all, you know, and, um, uh, you know, corners, you know, radius of corners, all that type of stuff is under your general tab. Your advanced tab is where we get into what's actually on the form itself. And you'll see here underneath form options, underneath the advanced tab on the right here, 
one, we you can see the little eyes lit up. That means we can see step one, and there's the slash through the second one, which means you can't see step two. And you see if I click on it, you'll see to the left right here that it changes between the two steps. So we're going to go through step one. Now here, I don't need shipping. We're not going to do that. So a lot of times I'll change this to like personal uh, information, something like that. And then below it where it says where, and you see where it corresponds this um, this field right here. I'm typing in over here, comparative to over here on the form. And then underneath this is where should we ship it? So that um, sometimes I'll put in like uh, enter your information or something like that right there. Um, it's really up to you and what's right for your business. So I'll do like personal information and information here. Um, and then it's up to you. If you want them to be able to have their company name, you can turn that on or off and you see how easy it is to hide it. Next one is going to be your email, your phone number, et cetera. If you want them to enable a country picker for the phone number, you can turn that on or off. And then going down here, the next one, since we're, you can either turn or on or off shipping by hiding it, and then you'll see it's just name, email, and phone number, or leaving it on. If you do leave it on, I recommend changing the headline underneath it from shipping to like, um, you know, something you can go as simple as address. So there we go. We got address, and then you've got the rest of your information down here. And as you scroll down, you'll see right here where it says uh, go to step number two. This is the information on this button. So you'll see if I add a one right there, it now says go to step 12. And underneath it would be any of your subtext or anything like that. The next thing would be to enable your cart mode or your product description. And if you wanted there to be able to have an order bump option, you'd slide this on. Now the order bump option will appear on the second um, form for the uh, sign up page. And then you've also got the ability to add coupons. And if you want, which sometimes I, I recommend, depending on what your company is doing, uh, you're going to want terms and conditions here. You can turn that on or off. And then you've got next to it, you've got your sticky contact. If you have any time this person that's using this before rec gets recognized by the system is input information, that information like their name, email, phone number will be pre-populated if you have sticky contact on. It helps save time. But uh, some businesses don't like that. They, allow, they want you to be able to put the information on, especially when making a purchase. Next one's gonna be making a new purchase, a new uh, contact for each purchase, which means they'll make a whole new contact uh, inside your CRM or inside high level for uh, whenever there's a purchase made. And then the next one is validate disposable email as well as your visibility between your desktop and your uh, mobile. The next thing we'll look at here is step number two. We're gonna jump on that bad boy. And you'll see everything that's set up here, as well as the ability to put a coupon on here and then your credit information and the products are listed here. At the top right, at the top, you'll see it says your info as I changed it before. But now you'll see underneath it says upgrade your order and save. We want to definitely change that to... Enter your information, you know, or something like that, or uh, or enter uh, could be your billing information would be another one uh, that is used a lot right here. And then underneath it, we're going to want to change your edit shipping details. That matches right here. So instead of that, we're going to change it to um, edit your personal information. And we're match it, change it to match the headline. Right. And then you'll see down here, the next one, they've got select item text, which goes right here, matches this item line. So if you want to change that, or if you want to change the select item price, which is this price right here, you could change those to match whatever you might want to change to amount, or uh, it might want to be, uh, you know, product or something like that. And then you have down here underneath the order summary, you're going to see you have the summary item text and the summary item price, which is also matches right here um, underneath those where it says amount and item. And then the last one is your button text where it says order complete, where it matches right here. You've also got the ability to add subtext. You can also enable a postcode or postal code if you want on here. And then you have your other uh, toggles as well. So if you, like I said, if you want to add an order bump, you could, you just add the product right there. Now, once this is all set up and you like it the way that it looks, you're gonna go ahead and hit save. Then what you're going to want to do is come here and you're going to want to add a product to your page. So you're going to come right here. You're going to go to your products tab. And this is where you're going to add your subscription product. So you'll come right here to add product. You'll then pick from your products you have right here. Or 
if you wanted to create a new product, you'll see there's a little pop-up where it says right here. Let's act like we didn't have any products and let's start from scratch and add one. You'll now see that this actually takes us to our payment tab right here and our under and products are highlighted. So what you do is you create your product. In this case, we're gonna say personal training. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you turn this off unless you do want it to be listed in your online store. Personal, so we'll just call this personal training package. And then you'd have your description. You could uh, format that however you wanted. You could upload your image. You did come down and you'd say, is this a physical good, a digital good or a service? In this case, it's a service. Your additional options, if you wanted something like a specific descriptor to be, be listed there to go on their statement, and then you'd list it, uh, or then you then you'd set the price. So the one thing you want to look at here in price is this one time or a reoccurring slash subscription based product. We're going to go ahead and make it reoccurring. You're going to set this for daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or custom date. Most of the time, it's going to be monthly. We'll set the amount. We'll say it's. Uh, let's say it was 600 a month for the first training. If you wanted to give them some type of trial, you could right here. You can set up your number of payments. Now, if this was a sub sub subscription, like say they had 12 payments you want to do, maybe it's one year, you could set that up for 12. But if it's ongoing and this is going to go till they cancel, I recommend setting it for something like 9,999 because they're probably going to have more payments than they're going to run out of, or run out of time or months here. But if it is something like a year-long subscription, or maybe it's a six-month subscription, you could come in here and you could set the number of payments to match. And we'll say 12 here. We'll say it's a one-year-long program that you're signing up for. You do have the ability to also set up for a setup fee. So there might be like initial uh, setup fee, especially if this was like an agency or something. It might be like 5000 up front to build everything out. And then, you know, it's 1500 a month uh, reoccurring after that. And that's how you'd be able to set that up is you just type in the initial 5000 right here. And then, of course, your amount would be different. It'd be 1500 It charged the 5000 Then you have these other additional options where you could uh, give a description of the price. Sometimes this is good because you do have the ability right here. You can click this button to add multiple pricings into one product. So um, sometimes the description is good because it allows you to have uh, all the different pricings in there and know which one's which real, uh, very easily. The next thing you hear is membership offer. So if you have a course created, all you do is you can toggle this on. You can then click right here in any of the courses that you've created will pop up right here you can then click on them and you'll be able to add them to this product and it will um, add them add this person when they sign up to that offer automatically once you feel comfortable with everything it's good to go you're going to hit save then since we started from scratch we're going to go back to sites over here we're going to go back to websites at the top second button at the top at the top right here go into our page we're now going to go to the three dots. We're going to hit products, list the product, and now we'll find the one that we just made, which is our personal training package one. We'll click the price, which is 600 bucks. You'll see right here, for some reason, we wanted to give it a different name. Maybe it's, it's we're using personal training package one on the back end, but we want to call it, you know, explosive one, or maybe it's a special or something. You can change the product name right here, and it'd be listed differently on the actual order form itself. And then if you wanted to, to um, have the product display for the pricing right here, override, maybe normally, you know, it says 600, but you wanted to say um, only 600 or, you know, um, 50% off, maybe it's a special and you wanted to say like 50% off, $600, something like that. You could type that right here and it'd pop up right here. And the next one is, um, and then this is the total amount that can be purchased per order. Um, so this would be, you know, um, if maybe you had like variants of maybe, um, you know, uh, t-shirts or something and you want to allow multiples per order, you can turn that on right here. And then if you wanted to make it an order bump, you just click this little button right here and hit save and it would make it an order bump. And then hit save and then see your, see your, your product will be listed. And now once you've added your product, you'll see once you go into your page, if you pop it out, enter in all your contact information, click to go to step two now. Then you'll see you've got your product listed here. And it's got the setup fee plus your initial payment of the $600 here. If you didn't want it to charge the first one, what you do is you put a 30-day trial in there and it wouldn't charge the initial charge. So there you've got that set up. You've got everything here. You've got your ability to do a credit card. You can set it up with Google or Apple Pay. 
And then uh, you just put in good to go. And once they put in their information here, it will now charge you. And then you'll have your recurring subscription set up. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I'm the Funnel Doc with the High Level Content Army. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.